Microsoft has stated that it's looking to announce new games at E3 this year, and that it has some surprising first-party games up its sleeve in the coming months. Halo 5 launched two years ago, and this year marks the 10th anniversary of Halo 3. But if you were expecting all of that to come together and culminate in a Halo 6 reveal at E3 this year, well, you might want to watch your expectations. I'll slip into my Dream Crusher persona for a minute in the name of realistic expectations. We've said this already, but we'll have a little something at E3, but it's not related to the next major entry in the franchise, according to 343 Industries community manager Brian Gerard on Reddit. That wording also seems to rule out a Halo 3 anniversary. It also obviously seems to rule out Halo 6. It sounds like whatever small surprise 343 Industries has planned might have to do with Halo Wars 2, which launched earlier this year. The same insider who had previously leaked an image of this year's intriguing Assassin's Creed game, the first one released since the series went on hiatus after a spate of middlingly received games, and one that allegedly makes multiple changes to the series formula, has now gone ahead and shared more information about what to expect from the game on Reddit. According to the insider, the team for this game is indeed comprised in large part of the same people who worked on the extremely well-received Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, with Ashraf Ismail as the project director, and Darby McDevitt is working on the plot. The game is three times as large as Black Flag, which is a bit insane given that Black Flag was already extremely large, has naval traversal but not combat, lets players control an eagle, and has a combat system inspired by CD Projekt Red's 2015 game The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. While The Witcher's combat was widely criticized, it is still better than the combat in Assassin's Creed, so Ubisoft could have done worse here, I suppose. The game is apparently planned for an October release on the Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Interestingly enough, there does not appear to be a Switch version of the game planned for now. The rumor seems to be convincing and consistent, and it may very well be the real thing. But as always, take it with a pinch of salt unless we have official confirmation. Sony has had a bumper year thus far with the PS4, with titles like Gravity Rush 2, Tales of Berseria, Yakuza 0, Persona 5, and Horizon Zero Dawn. Meanwhile, the number of high-profile releases found primarily on Xbox One has been rather sparse. Microsoft has reassured fans that it's committed to new experiences heading into E3 2017, and that could be truer than we thought. According to industry insider Shinobi602 on Twitter, Microsoft has marketing on a major unannounced AAA title. He then says, bring on E3, thus indicating that it will be showcased at Microsoft's E3 presser. It should be noted that the major unannounced AAA doesn't mean exclusive. Instead, it could be a situation similar to Destiny, where Sony has handled the lion's share of marketing as part of its timed exclusive content deal with Activision. This unannounced title could very well be a timed exclusive for the Xbox One, or even have a significant portion of timed exclusive content for Microsoft's platform. Either way, we'll know for sure at Microsoft's E3 presser on June 11th, so stay tuned for more details. Though publisher Electronic Arts has stated how happy it is with Bioware Montreal, the studio that developed Mass Effect Andromeda, resources from the studio have been shifted elsewhere since launch. According to Kotaku's Jason Sharir, who cited different sources close to the company, Mass Effect is currently on hiatus. Bioware Montreal employees were shifted to EA Motive to work on Star Wars Battlefront 2 and Bioware's new IP, which has since been delayed, and the main developer is now support-oriented and focused on patching Mass Effect Andromeda's multiplayer. It's interesting to note that Bioware in Edmonton is currently responsible for the new IP, codenamed Dylan, with Bioware Austin assisting. When contacted for comment, Bioware Montreal studio director Yannick Roy said, Our teams at Bioware and across EA put in tremendous effort bringing Mass Effect Andromeda to players around the world. Even as Bioware continues to focus on the Mass Effect Andromeda community and live service, we're constantly looking at how we're prepared for the next experiences we'll create. The teams in EA Worldwide Studios are packed with talent, and more than ever, we're driving collaboration between studios on key projects. With our Bioware and Motive teams sharing studio space in Montreal, we have Bioware team members joining Motive projects that are underway. We're also ramping up teams on other Bioware projects in development. There will be much more to come from Bioware in the years ahead. However, for the time being, Mass Effect will not be one of those things. Employee shifts, especially between studios, is a given under larger publishers. But what are your thoughts on the franchise apparently being on ice? Let us know below. Star Wars Battlefront 2 seems to be an exciting prospect, precisely because EA and DICE appear to have learned from all the criticism that was leveled at the original game. However, one thing that not even the most jaded cynic could accuse the original game of was it lacking in content. The content may not have been what you wanted specifically, but there was a lot of it in the game. And it seems like Battlefront 2 will have even more of it. Speaking at the financial earnings call to investors, EA CEO Andrew Wilson said that Star Wars Battlefront 2 will have more than three times the content that 2015's Battlefront did. 
Star Wars Battlefront 2 will have more than three times the content of the previous game at launch, with a brand new story, a new single-player campaign, new modes, characters, vehicles, and planets from all eras in the Star Wars universe, as well as a live service plan that will continue to add even more fun for the global community, he said. Leaks can be pretty outrageous these days. A recent off-screen image showcased Assassin's Creed Origins and its Egypt setting. There's a current rumor going around about a screenshot that's from Red Dead Redemption 2. However, the rumor that Far Cry 5, which apparently exists, will be set in the Wild West has to be the weirdest. Which is why noted Kotaku writer and leaker Jason Sharir chimed in on NeoGAF to offer his take. He first said that since my name has been attached to this thing, I just want to be clear. All I've heard is that the new Far Cry is set in Montana. I cannot confirm or deny anything, Wild West or 19th century, and all that stuff actually feels like a big stretch from bottom-feeding rumor websites. I have no idea whether or not it's true." Sharir also discussed why the Wild West rumor may have gained some traction. Again, there was absolutely no evidence pointing to a Wild West setting. He later said that some sites saw the original gaff thread about the filming in Montana, and then for some reason connected that to a 2015 Ubisoft survey asking if players would like to see a Far Cry game set in the Wild West. The filming in Montana is real. The survey is a survey. Regardless of where it's set, Far Cry 5 can't be any less weird than Far Cry Primal or even Blood Dragon, right? We'll have to wait till E3 2017 to find out. Remedy Entertainment's Alan Wake will be available on the Xbox Store and Steam till the end of this weekend. Why? Because on May 15th, it will be removed due to expiring music licenses. Poets of the Fall, why have you forsaken us? The news was announced by Remedy in a tweet which also confirmed that the game's physical editions would be pulled from stores as well. The game, along with the DLC and Alan Wake's American Nightmare, will be discounted by 90% starting from May 13th, 10am Pacific Time slash 1pm Eastern Time on Steam. No word yet on whether the Xbox Store will receive the same discount. However, if you already own the game, then it will still be in your library. It simply won't be purchasable from any stores, online or physical. Remedy said in a recent community post, though, that Alan Wake's American Nightmare will stay in retail. We are looking into re-licensing the music for Alan Wake, but have no time frame for this. All of that teasing by Platinum Games and Sega has borne fruit at last. Like with Bayonetta last month, they will be launching Vanquish, Platinum's cult hit third-person shooter from 2010, on PC later this month. The PC version will support 4K resolution, have an unlocked frame rate, multiple granular graphical options and settings, support for Steam trading cards, keyboard and mouse controls, and support for multiple languages. Pre-ordering the game will get you a 5-track soundtrack sampler, character and enemy avatars, an art book, and exclusive wallpapers. If you already bought Bayonetta, you get a further 25% discount from the game's $20 price point, which makes this an absurdly good deal. It was great to see the positive response from our community to the Bayonetta PC launch last month, and we're pleased that we're in a position to be able to announce Vanquish, another of our highly requested back catalog titles," said John Clark, Senior Vice President of Commercial Publishing for Sega Europe. There's more to come from Sega in this space, so stay tuned for further announcements. That'll be it for this video. If you like what we're doing, please go ahead and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.